Insane HD redeemed dance off time. Oh, it's fucking happening. Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video and today is Try Hard Tuesday so during our stream we were playing a bunch of meta decks. One in particular that we spammed out a lot today was Karina Control which we found a bit of success with. The deck is without a doubt one of the most powerful and top of the meta game right now because it simply just does not truly have a bad matchup. There's ways to win everything. Probably one of the hardest matchups you'll have is the Mirror matchup. The deck has a very it has a very linear strategy. You pretty much go play the same way every game, and there's not too much decision making. Sometimes throughout the late game versus other control decks, the decision making can become a little bit intricate, especially against Karma Ezreal. You can make some mistakes if you're not careful, because uh, Commander Lidros and Karina, which are our top end cards, are a bit expensive. And if not played at the right time, you can and will lose games. But without a doubt, we went 6-2 and two today, which is pretty much a no joke. The deck is just so strong. There's not much else to talk about. Let's go jump across to the deck list, have a look at the cards, talk about what they do and why they are here. So obviously, for all the newer players, these are your two cards that you're going to be seeing quite a lot. Commander Lidros, you play it, it cuts your opponent's Nexus health in half. And then last breath, you return it to your hand. It's an, it's an insane card in a control deck. It just has the ability to make your control deck suddenly have a win condition outside of just removing your opponent's minions and stuff. Shadow Isles has access to this, so we be building into Shadow Isles and Piltover. So we can also use Karina, which is another late game nutty card. So you'll obliterate the top five cards of your deck to deal one damage to all uh, enemies, including the Nexus and the board state for each spell obliterated so you have to be careful sometimes you can and will hit some units and this will not deal as much damage as you want it to but these are your two main strategy build around cards literally the rest of the deck is pretty much removal one of the most recent additions to it with the new expansion was Vi it pretty much gives the deck what I feel uh, what it didn't have before was which was something productive to do and a big meathead just to play onto the field and you can also threaten some damage as well as dealing uh, with annoying units that you can't always get the chance to deal with good against like decks that use deny especially karma ezreal gives you another way to deal with their key units if it ever comes down to that but most of the time uh if they do have the karma ezreal you're probably losing the game so that's one of the most interesting matchups that we're going to talk about which is probably going to be karma ezreal because this deck originally was catered well towards it but i do believe that karma ezreal did get some pretty interesting tools to allow them to play a bit more uh aggressively which they couldn't always before before it was just pretty much like they are attempting to hit your units with spells and pretty much get to Karma Ezreal, right? But since this deck doesn't really use many units that we don't have to play if we don't need to, we have, of course have like a heavy spider package, which is used well against dealing uh, with other decks, but against Karma Ezreal, you'll tend not to play them. Anyway, we're getting a little bit off track here. Let's just go back uh, one second and talk about some of the cards again. Real Nation, top end, just a single copy of, I think, decks that run more than one can sometimes be a bit clunky if not like well catered for this is a deck that can use extra ruination so if you haven't got all the cards here i can recommend you chuck another ruination in but you also do have the ability to end the games prior to that being relevant two copies of vengeance because it's pretty much good removal and we're a deck that can get away with building a deck like this as i've said before in the past if you're a shadow wilds deck that is well catered for playing some heavy removal which is pretty much running the spider package then you can get away with multiple copies of these cards but uh, as I said, I would recommend that you do not put too many of these in because they do tend to not be as powerful as you might think. My list is a little bit different to some of the most standard, standardized ones. I do run Atrocity as a one-of. This helps against certain matchups. We're talking like the really controlly matchups that just want to like interact with you and like also not do much until a late game. This Atrocity can just be a bit of a backbreaker sometimes and it gives you ways of also being able to deal with the mirror matchup if they haven't catered for the mirror matchup. I think Atrocity is really powerful in the mirror and can pretty much be a game winner on the spot because they have no way to really deal with it. And if they do, you're forcing them to use mana. Withering Whale, three copies of. I think Withering Whale is just insane. It's the deck that runs tons of removal. There's ways to interact with aggro decks. We're pretty much are gonna beat up on every aggro deck we find. Uh, some mid-range decks might be a bit tricky, but in general, Withering Whale always slotted in against your aggro decks. It's just it is what it is. In a deck in a deck like this, where we don't really care about the board too much, we just run three copies of. We're pretty much got all the removal under the boat. Three grass with the undying. Similar reasons. It just helps to deal with 
uh, annoying units and just get some HP back. The drain is what makes this card really relevant too. Same with the Blooming Whale. The fact that they heal you is what makes them so relevant. Broad Awakening, this is pretty much to buy time. You can use this, use this on the aggressive too, but it's pretty much as a board flood to put up a bunch of ch chump blockers most of the time and just be annoying and buy time. You can sometimes find yourself in a spot where you're playing the aggressor as well. So it's pretty powerful. So like most of the time, this early game package is just like you play them, you're defending your face, you're either attacking them or you're just, just buying time really. Static Shock is a single copy of, this is one of the cards I've reduced at the moment. Through recommendations, I found that cutting one of them for Atrocity uh, and a Glimpse Beyond have been working out quite well. Glimpse Beyond is another card that's really good and teched against the mirror matchup, so you might see some lists running more copies of these. But for now, I've just got one. This might be adjusted as we play, but I like the one for now. Because we're not always going to have tons of units to actually Glimpse Beyond. It helps against Kame Ezreal as well. Gotcha is three copies of, so this used to kind of be like get excited, but now Gotcha is just finding its home in this deck instead because we don't have to discard a card, and that's really important. Sometimes we can draw it, and there's the ability to play it for two mana, which is relevant, but most of the time the four mana cost is not going to hurt you too much. And for the upside that every now and then you get a reduction on it from drawing it can sometimes help you quite a lot. Frenzied Skira, this is uh, in standard lists. You'll probably see only two copies of this. I'm running three. This was my first replacement for the Vi that I was missing. I went to Frenzy Skidra. If you haven't got, <clears throat> pardon me, three copies of Vi, if you haven't got any copies of Vi, you can still play this deck. You will probably struggle against the mirror matchup, but hey, you might consider running cards like Atrocity and Glimpse Beyond to make up for it. This deck will still run without Vi. It'll still be quite powerful, and you can always consider, hey, if I can't run Vi, maybe I'll take into the mirror by playing another Vengeance. But there's just some things you have to consider. I do think Vi is a great fit for this deck, and I would recommend that you do play with Vi if you can, but as I said, you can play this deck without it. Vile Feast is a 3 of this card is this all around, I think I've mentioned this many times before in the past, it's just a very powerful card. There's not much more else to be said, the ability to slow down aggro with this single card is quite dramatic, so I would not consider changing 3 Vile Feast, uh, Mystic Shot serves the same purpose, this is a bit more flexible. This can help you push through the damage after you play your Lidros and your Karina, and it also helps to deal with the early game. We talked about the glimpse, at least finds its last last bit of work here, I guess. This is just pretty much to flow along with the early game. At least this is kind of just all around quite a powerful card. And if we're not running any other champions, then at least this finds its home in most Shadow Wilds decks. Dynamic Beam is a three of. This is a very flexible card. The card is too powerful. And Piltover and Zorn, most decks will be running Dynamic Beam. Uh, most of the time it helps you to deal with Early game, late game, it's just, you can tell how flexible it is by the fact that you can spend any amount. You just have to be a bit careful with this card because sometimes you find yourself in a position where you have to make the call whether you want to blow up all your mana to use your Thermo Beam early or uh, use other spells within the same turn and then play Thermo Beam. It's a bit tricky to pilot sometimes, but most of the time it's pretty simple to use Thermo Beam. I think I've rambled on a bit too much. So let's go play some games. We've got a fair bit here. We managed to hit Diamond by the end of this, so that was really nice. Um, tomorrow we're going to have an upload as well. It's going to be, be a bit shorter, not as in-depth, because I'm going to be a bit of a busy man, so I tried to get as much footage from today as possible, as I do have some plans tomorrow. So I hope you'll be able to stick around for that one too. We're going to play some uh, Lux Karma on that video. Just a couple of games to keep you guys tied over until I make it back the next day. Thanks, you guys, again, so much for the support. And we'll see you soon. Reversing indoor spiders. Indoor spiders. I guess I should be keeping Vile Feast and Broad Awakening. The chains, they never stop. Awesome. I'll float that one mana. It's fine, we'll be playing at least here. Okay, no, at least from my opponent. Probably takes the block with the Warden Spray because he needs something to play. Okay, Indua is 1-1. One, 2-2. One. Two, two. Pretty good find from him. Bit of a high roll.
I develop a broad awakening. It will display Withering Whale, which leaves him on two mana. Enough for a Vile Feast. Uh, for the chance that he hasn't gotten Duel, though, I still got uh, Withering Whale. Still got to try it. I think it's too passive if they don't play broad. And it's nothing else to really do, and I'm not exactly going to be beating Broad Awakening. So he'll wait to play Withering Whale during the combat step, so we can get my extra spider. Yep, pretty standard. At least we get the extra damage, and he gets less healing. Plus. Wraith Collar. I guess Broad Awakening looks pretty good here. Go ahead. Play with your food. Time to get my hands dirty. I'll actually choose just to block the Wraith Collar, but that will be it. The chance I level up Elise. Can cause a lot of pressure. Will be passing. I wouldn't be surprised to see him drop some sort of spell here. Okay. Let me change into something more comfortable. Feeling pretty good about the open attack. We're not actually going to block anything here. We're going to try and get everything to go face. Incredible. He had no answer there, or he was playing on ruinating. The fact that they all had Fearsome 2 was pretty relevant. Could be possible that I decide to Withering Whale, but I'll just pass for now. Happy to float X amount of mana. I can probably just Gotcha. That's probably a more valuable play here. If I Gotcha, if he plays another Elise, there's nothing I can do about it. That's not true. I can play Vile Feast. Gotcha's minimum resources here. He's they who endure should be sitting at about a 4-4 at the moment. The fact that we got that attack through with the spiders is really relevant. Um, I think we're pretty fine dropping Thermo Beam here. It's a little bit awkward because I can't drop it. Hmm. I float that three mana. I think it's just Thermo Beam. Even though it costs nine mana, it's very... I kind of don't want him to challenge my Elise. And should I be blocking here for the chance that I can actually kill him next turn? I think I'll be going down a bit too much HP if I don't block. It's kind of weird. I don't think I will block. I think I'll go down to 10. I feel like he didn't have the answers before. Maybe he doesn't have them now. Wow. He had a very awkward hand and we abused it. Sick. His hand's nuts. How do I deal with the rear guard sergeant though? Oh, just dodge the rear guard sergeant, please. I 
I fixed up my uh, sub button as well. So now if I did this, should work. Oh shit. Oh, we're in the attack token. That's actually insane. I think that means we win. The Elise is pretty relevant here for blocking something. Yep. Come closer. I don't fight. Yep. Come stay a while. Time to go. Open attack. We could use a bite. Uh three mana. He's best play. I think Crimson Disciple comes into the field is pretty strong. At that point, I should just pass for now, see what he does. Hmm. I'll see if he makes. I wanted to make one more action, but that might be a mistake. I should have just double Vile Feasted there to get rid of the Boom Crew. Slight mistake. War Mesa, reporting for duty. That's fine. At least I have the mana to do this now. I think it's a little bit better. Deny two damage, he forces him into a Noxium Fervor. Doesn't have it. Pass for now. For the Empire. Not much I can do about that. For the glory of Noxus. We'll be passing. Change his mind. Mystic shot. So now I want a vile feast. I'll actually hit the two two. I don't think it matters which one we hit specifically. I can hit the boom crew or the demologist with the uh, the vile feast. Sets up for the whale. Actually, it makes more sense to hit the boom crew, so I take one less damage. I'm tanking extra damage here by accident, but that's fine. I should have uh, pinged the boom crew. Because we we're going to ignore one of the attacks no matter what, so why take an extra point of damage? Actually, unfortunately, I think I have to play Broad here. I should be attacking. He most likely wants to ignore my board, and if he does take the blocks, then I lose a bit of value from my setup for Withering Whale, but it's okay. What's the best use of my resources? Probably not even with the ring whale this turn. Probably not even playing gotcha this turn. I wait to see how he responds. I have prior. It. He's gonna develop there, obviously. Or maybe not. Of course I'm ready. I feel as if that's a good vengeance target. 
That's three points of damage I'll be denying if I just play Vengeance. I'm sitting on 12, I can still play Withering Whale and Gotcha. That was a lie. I cannot play, uh, I can't play uh, Withering Whale. I can't play Vile Feast. He must not be sitting on Noxian Fervor. Let's dodge. Oh, I can't wait. Dodge the one drop. Oh boy. I dodge the Noxian Fervor, that I do. This double Withering Whale should be enough healing. Okay, I take the extra two here. Blood Transfusion. I'm just going to drop this with Aaron Whale. We'll end the game next turn. I need to be sitting on a double decimate hand and there's nothing I can do about that. How's the games going? Not too bad so far, just getting warmed up. Playing some uh, tryhard decks today. We're going to be playing plenty of new meta decks. And so far we've dropped one game, had one win. And there's only X amount of cards I can beat this turn. He needs to have double decimate, which is very unlikely. It is super unlikely. Lidros is more of a consistent win. That last matchup, uh, our opponent actually played that incredibly well. It was actually really close. Do I ever keep buying the opening hand? I probably should just be looking for like my grass without undying and stuff. It might be too slow of a keep, but because I already have Mystic Shot and Elise, our early game looks pretty good. And Vi can challenge and get rid of Boom Crew Rookies and Legion Saboteurs pretty easily. Maybe I'll keep it. I'll give it a shot. I only have two copies of Vi in the deck too, so we're not always going to have one on standby. And being on the attack token is really relevant for us. You just you just hate to see the Boom Crew Rookie come down all the time. It's the one obnoxious card. We always block. What is uh, relevant here? Just an open attack makes the most sense to start off the turn. Obviously we have no development cards. Oh, I can't wait. 
If I thermo beam that right now, he can counter it by playing Noxian Fervor or Blood Transfusion. If he drops his Blood Transfusion now, I believe that is a victory for us. I just gotta take the thermo beam chances now while I can. Dis Disciple is really threatening. And he hasn't got enough mana for Noxian Fervor, sorry. He only has enough mana for Blood Transfusion. But I feel as if. Damn it. Yeah, that's kind of like the best outcome for him. He definitely wants to develop now. So what would be the best option here? I think Static Shock on these two. First of all makes the most sense. I want to deny them from getting the attack value. So he's not sitting on another transfusion. Disciple sitting at 1 HP. Let's make it deep. Obviously it's not going to attack. I love a taste of the action. Okay, he's attacking. This doesn't make much sense to me. I'm always going to block there. Like, why in the heck wouldn't I? Now I probably want to play the aggressor. So I think Vitus makes the most sense. It's actually a little bit better than Broad Awakening. But actually, hang on. It stops him from developing at least like anything he plays I can swing into. And then... Hmm, it's kind of weird actually. I feel like Vi just makes the most sense. But we push more damage this way. We can start to pressure him down. Plus if he goes wide on the board, I don't think Vi gets enough done. He'll only he'll develop after I attack though. So I think Broad Awakening is just gonna be correct. I could even play like Elise. Might even be slightly better than Broad Awakening. Who leaves me options. It might be a bit slow, but I have Mystic Shot value. You could just drop a Decimate too. Because that's the one line that beats us. I'm happy to float some mana though. I can set myself up for... I mean, we only have 9 mana. Nothing too special. If he drops like Saboteur... Or Boom Crew Rookie, I'll immediately just do whatever I can to kill it before it attacks. These are some weird lines that I'm not expecting. He's running a different list. He's, he's Raven Jinx. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably not playing like the most optimally. Okay, we're gonna go super aggressive next turn, try and kill him. If I don't summon Skidora right now, I'll be sitting on 4 plus 7, 11. I think 11 mana is better. I don't think I play Skidora here. I want to have the options of Grass Beyond Dying plus within Whale for 6 HP heal. My true beauty is beneath the skin. Yeah, it's over. I mean... There's so many ways of ending that game. We just drew into atrocity too. 24 hours is a long time. It is. I'll get burnt out too hard. I think 12 hours could be a good start though. Okay, so he's playing... Um, this gentleman is playing... Mogwai's version of TF Fizz. Which was very, it wasn't his original version, but I'm surprised how shockingly close it was to some of our attempted goes at it. It's nice to see that I wasn't too far off getting an optimal list. So I'm pretty sure I know exactly what to play around. I know exactly what we play around. Everything. I think they're running Thermo Beam in this one. Didn't have the Fizz open. I could have the uh, TF here. Okay, I'll open attack. Out from the darkness. I 
I'm happy to float mana here. I think he's going to go for TF here. Is he just drawing really poorly? Lucky for him, man, because I can't do anything productive any either. So he has a hand that has no Fizz or TF. Okay, he must have just drew into that. So it's a red card. Yeah, I just let that happen. I'm a people person. You dare. I got a mana, right? I wouldn't mind flipping Elise. I think flipping Elise is going to be pretty important. How does he stop this? He could have suit up. Grass on dying makes the most sense. We're not going to get a chance for Belize, but if we clear his board, the open attack gets the job done anyway. He has a two mana version. That's kind of relevant. I know exactly what you're playing, buddy. I know exactly what you're playing. Don't you dare test me with that deck. I spent so long getting my ass kicked playing it. Don't test me, dude. Holy shit. Unlucky he was versing the Fizz champ, dude. <laughs> GG, thanks, Faint. One game, we'll get Diamond, we'll get over and done with it, guys. Then I'll switch up decks. And probably one of the best matchups for us. One of the best strategies here would just be not to do anything. Now, I wonder if I actually keep Lee Dross in this kind of matchup. I know it's recommended not to. But honestly, in this matchup, it comes down to Lee Dross. So let's do it. I'll just get rid of everything else. I don't really know what I'm looking for. Something like this looks good. So what he wants to do is kind of like find the two mana one three, the claw of the dragon. No, it's not claw of the dragon. He wants to find as much tempo plays as he can make. The order rewards its faithful. What's he do about this? He, he can flip it back into his hand. I should wait till he attacks. Buffing the Vyres. I just need to make sure I play this correctly. So I guess, yeah, keeping the Leedros is mm, it's not recommended. But that's okay. We'll be passing. The dark um... I've got six mana. Could just play Grasp. Mm. I'll pass. I'll play my mana. I'm chilling. He can attack me in the face and I'll get the healing back anyway, so. Two mana gotcha looks pretty good. Very interactive gameplay. Should I play Vi? Probably not. <laughs> it's serious gameplay, dude. Poor Israel. Sad face, dude. <sighs> Rummage. What do you chump womp and Gotcha. I mean, I'll just keep passing. The Vi can be played after lead rose if we can play the Vi if we need to. We are on the attack token. I guess now we can play Vi. 
He can will it. But I'm going to try and clear off the chump one while being semi productive. Triple Lidros. This is clearly a mistake keeping one. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Stun. Check this out. This is a little bit of BM. I'll just keep spamming lead roses until this game's over now. There goes half his HP. Guess there's not much I can do about that. Take three or take two? Probably should have thermo beam there actually. I'll take two. <laughs> Plus this has fearsome, so makes more sense. Where there is life, there is hope. The Does have karma on the field. I should be slightly threatened by that. But I don't think I'll stop doing my lead Ross game plan. Counterfeit copies. Quite possibly shuffling denies into his deck. If he uses deny, he leaves him with five mana. What the hell is he doing? He can't burst spell the health potions. You want to do that afterwards. Okay. Pretty obvious I'm just gonna swing. Hmm. What does he block here, man? He has Will of Ionia and he blocks with Karma. You could have stun cards too. I feel like he has to block with karma without the, that that happens no matter what. It's a fair bit of buffs onto his Ezreal. I'm a tree redeemed hydrate. Sure thing. How many buffs it is going as well? Fuck, man.
hear the song. Five spells, let's go. Three! Shadow. Fuck me. I'm about to lose this game. Oh. Was that before? What a fucking joke. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be so sad. I think I played that like us. I played that really bad. Vine in the opening hand is pretty good. The atrocity should help us in this matchup. Bit of mind games here, see so who makes the first response. Yeah, like I could have done something, but now yeah, we're doing well. Gets the shit done. Easy clap. Decent. This is all about getting as much value from my cards as possible. Damn it. And he got more value from that card than I did. Five mana. Alright, there's always a chance that he hasn't been sitting on a uh, Vi. This could be our upper hand, if he doesn't have Vi. He can't do anything about this without it. That should be free damage. What can you possibly do to stop this? That doesn't do a lot. Guess he's setting up for something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
I'm happy to swing back my turn here. If I was to go play Gotcha right now, he may have another glimpse. But they often only run very few copies. There's not entirely a lot of good options here. Unless he has a lease. I mean, I think I'll play my Scudero. Hmm. Ruination gets stronger for him. He's gonna pass for now. I don't really know what to do, so... Should I be like developing? Not really. We found Lidros, that's fucking awesome. So I guess now it's just about maximum sustainability. This turn and then maximum value next turn. Extra glimpses. I'll make him use more resources than that. It might look crazy. Yeah, sure. Broad Awakening. Wait, we're not running Broad Awakening, are we? No, we are. Point Sensation. Dodge one more spider, please. Sick. Okay, I think we should win this if we do everything correctly. Because we always have prior now. And he'll be constantly on the back foot. We did do a pretty expensive vengeance to, to, to deny him drawing cards. Which may have been a mistake since we always had like good prior. Priority, I mean, uh, just because we're, we're dropping the Lidros first means a lot. It means like he can drop his Lidros as well. But if he does that, the weird thing is he loses the game because Vi has Challenger, which is super relevant here. He would need to uh, play Lidros plus have a way to deal with Vi, which he does not. So Lidros would be a loss here. He could play Karina. That might change things. But most likely he does like something like this, right? Bugged out. Bit of boy bugging out. Hello. So we just play out Lidros, right? Is there a four mana way he can deal with this? No. Oh. This, is, this card's fucking bugging out. Vi is going a bit buggy. Obviously we block. No. 
So I actually can't play Leedros here. There's a weird play. Oh no, I can still play Leedros. But I'm not exactly killing him after that. I could just go for the win here with Karina. Because I don't think Grass Beyond Dying gets... It will go off prior. Grass Beyond Dying would kind of save him here. But ever so barely. I'm just gonna go for it. I see a win. I'll take a win. And if he's if he's if he's using a uh, grass beyond dying, he is not developing Lidros. <laughs> sure. You've also got to block the attack, though. You know. Bit of a weak Karina. We lost that other Karina too. Use a vile piece to put a chump blocker for his spiders. This visual bug is tripping me out, dude. So if he doesn't swing here, it may be because he's sitting on Karina and he wants to try and do a different line where he denies me my... That wouldn't make much sense though. It only makes the most sense for him to attack here. So I have to match that now. Every point of damage does matter here. If he doesn't swing here, I can do a weird line where I play Vi instead. Because Vi doesn't die to Karina. And he won't have enough mana to play anything else. He should be attacking here. However, actually the Vi not, might not be a correct line. Actually, no, it would be because I can go by plus brood. He's in a position where he, uh, if he doesn't attack, he would find himself in an awkward spot. So what's correct here? He. He 
feel like we play Vi here. Trying to think of the most consistent outs. I feel like Vi is one of the most consistent outs. Am I making a mistake? I didn't really think this through. So I, I put him in a spot where he can't play Lidros. He can play Lidros actually. No, he can't. He'll be put in a spot where he can't play Lidros or Karina, which means that he has to use like Get Excited, which they're not running. He could use Vengeance. If he uses Vengeance, then I can play Brood Awakening, I think for the win. I'm gonna try the Vi. If he plays Karina or Lidros here, he loses. I'm pretty sure. The Thermo Beam shouldn't change much. Okay, he just loses. Actually, no, he might lose. Do I trust that this won't hit five spells? That's the only way he wins. And if I play Grasp, I'm not winning this turn. Ah! Uh, shit. Am I feeling lucky? Shit. Fuck it. I'm gonna go. We win. Oh. Is there a one mana spell I'm not aware of? No, there's not. Oh, dude, that was so... Oh, that made me so anxious. Cool. That was way too intense for a game. <laughs> oh, that literally come down to the fact that uh, if he had pulled the uh, cards he needed. Uh, yep. He's look good. He's on the attack token, fortunately enough, this is where he wants to be. And the rear guard opener would be strong. That gets the same same amount done. We still double attack. We still attack. That doesn't scare me. Is Karina and Lidros is going to be the death of us? And I'm not a big fan of the triple release. Okay, so should we drop this? Fain HD redeemed dance off time. Oh, it's fucking happening. Let me finish this game, dude, and work out exactly what the fuck I'm gonna do. I used to shuffle. Maybe I'll do that. 
Tell you what, if we win this game, there'll be some serious dance off time. <laughs> mm. I should probably thin my beam. Uh, how much damage can I afford to take next turn? For Thermo Beam, I won't take the two from the spider. I still have enough mana for... Yeah, I think it's going to be correct. I still have enough mana for Grass Beyond Dying, so... That's good. Dance off time. Just block like this for now. I guess I should be passing. I want to make sure I have Grass Beyond Dying ready to go against whatever he develops. Let's say he drops Decimate, Mystic Shot. Game plan's changed. He's going to kill us. So I need to kill him. Could a grass booth? You want cat? Oh, Lewis? Hey, we diamond! Dance off time! Ah! Oh! Easy clap.